This episode of the Party Loaded Podcast is proudly sponsored by Audible.com. Check out their awesome catalogue of audiobooks with over 180,000 titles to choose from. And be sure to grab a free audiobook on us and support the show by visiting audibletrial.com slash endgame. Let's party. It's Wednesday, the 6th of April, 2016, and you are listening to episode 20 of the Party Loaded podcast. My name is Luke Ritalik, and joining me as always, we have the three other hosts of this show. Uh, tonight, sounding slightly more robotic than normal, we have Ollie. I am a robot, but in all seriousness, I broke my headset mic, so I'm doing this via my phone. So apologies <laughs> what? for now. As I understand it, because the, the reasoning you gave us before was something happened where you were yanking it too hard. Is that the story? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start me off again. I got the giggles. That's what's going to happen. Imogen. Imogen, stop laughing. The, the, giggle pot, Imogen. the giggle pot you can hear there is uh, Imogen. How are you? <gasps> Hello. I pre-apologize. I don't know what it is. I just can't stop. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a hilarious episode. <laughs> my, my goal for tonight is to get you to the point where you wet yourself. <laughs> So, um, whoa, whoa, that's a different podcast. <laughs> Wait, is it? <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see. And we have Jam. Hey, you doing, Jam? Hi. Can you, can you help me? Make I got it? weird. Can, huh? you... I got really weird. I want to go back. We... <laughs> I do. I do. What? Weird or we. Uh, anyway, moving on. <sighs> so, um, yeah. Hi, guys. Let's let's talk about things that are completely not urine related and uh, have a whole bunch of fun talking about just video a point, games. Just to clarify, you said as always. You know, I think we've proven that it's not always the case that all of us are here. So that, I don't that think is true. Tech, and tech, in fact, we, we almost didn't have Ollie tonight, but he d- decided to uh, muck around and, and try a, a, a solution that's slightly. Uh, MacGyvered it. Yeah, he MacGyvered it, basically. So he's going to sound a little bit weird tonight. There are so many cables into my phone right now. (laughs) (laughs) So I apologize for the slight drop in audio quality, but um, the only other alternative was improving our audio quality massively by not having Ollie sound at all. So anyway, (laughs) that was really I was happy to have an evening off playing Division. I shouldn't say that. That's mean. I'm a nasty boy. All right. So um, what have we been playing this week? Ollie, let's let's start with you anyway. What, what's been going on? You, you're still doing some divisioning? What, what else is on there? I'm still divided. Um, I also played Rocket League. That game, once again, is the perfect mix of making you feel like a goddamn genius or a goddamn just special ed kid when it comes to controls. <laughs> like, holy shit. If I play with one group of friends, I'm like, yes, this is great. Playing with another group of friends, I'm like, Wow. I'm the kid that gets picked last on every sports team right now. So if you were to pick like your, your crowning glory achievement in Rocket League at the moment, like your, your greatest sort of victory, what would you say it has been? I don't have one. That's really depressing. <laughs> I've got oh, cool- the pause before that was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is slow. Um, no, I don't really have a crowning achievement. Maybe the day I beat, like, um, Ari or Sam Mm -hmm. one-on-one, that'll be a crowning achievement. That'll be pretty good. It will be. It'll never happen. It'll never fucking happen. Oh, but it might. We've got to hold that hope. Random chance will see me through. Mm -hmm. Um, Besides Rocket League, I played some Helldivers, not with you guys because you guys suck. I played with some other people online. That's really fun, as we'll talk about later. And I also tried to play Move or Die, which made me very angry because it has the worst fucking connection optimization I've ever come across in a released game. Oh, Bar no. Oh, no. I often play it. That makes me I sad. played 10 seconds of it. I went, this is really cool. And then just, no. And I should say, I'm on, like, the best internet you can get in Australia with one of the best routers you can buy, money can buy. Which is about and, the, yeah. the, the tenth of the speed that your average punter in the US will get, if that. <laughs> yes, but still, that's why I'm, prefa- I'm professing Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Not global. But yes, it was very, very aggravating, much to Jamie's amusement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me. That's me. I'm keeping it short and sweet because otherwise Luke will get angry post in editing. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> all right. Well, how about uh, Imogen next? What, what do you got going on? Well, 
uh, played a whole bunch of Minecraft. Kind of had a weird evening where we kind of jumped on and wasn't really sure. Didn't really want to dig a big giant hole anymore and wasn't really sure what I was going to do. And that usually means that I start abandoning projects and just go start exploring and getting lost in the world. (laughs) I have had some extraordinary and weird lag issues with it, which I think is just my connection. I do not know what's going on with my laptop. It is deciding that it is not up to the task of a lot of games that we've been playing lately, which brings me to Helldivers. We'll talk about that in more detail later, but played some Helldivers as well this week. But that's it. I really wanted to play Move or Die, and I'm really sad to hear that it's uh, got some connectivity issues. I was going to buy it on the Xbox so we could play it locally, um, so maybe I'll still do that. Who knows? But yeah, not a, not a lot of gaming because I had the exam late last week and starting new study this week because I'm an insane person. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just some Minecraft. Too much real life thing for you. When, when's the break going to come, Imogen? When's the break going to come? <laughs> in in a month, I have a two month break, but then I have a whole bunch of other life stuff that oh. I need to do because I'm ignoring other life. <laughs> oh, really? I was going nice. to say, if, you, if you're taking a bit of a break in about a month's time, that's probably going to be fairly well timed because have you guys looked mm. at the schedule for May? What a convenient time <laughs> to be free and not studying. I wonder if Imogen thought about this. <laughs> should, we, mm. should we tick them off one by one? Is um, is No Man's Sky May as well or is that later? June. June, okay. June or July, I think. So, yep. so May we've got Doom, of course. We've yep. got, uh, I mean, um, that, uh, May is going to be Uncharted 4 for me, which I don't think you guys are playing. Um, we've got, I will. Will you? Okay, cool. Sweet. We can compare notes. We'll have Overwatch as well, which is kicking off the beta and then the formal release later in May also. Um, what else is on the list? I know I'm forgetting things. No, I don't think so. The, the problem we're going to have is that Doom is actually released, so actual release the same day as if you pre-order Overwatch. And the problem we have is that we have a finite group of people who we play games with and mm. they're going to choose one or the other. Yeah. So if you're going to be... Oh, really? That's interesting. That is interesting. I feel like most people will choose Overwatch. Yeah, I think it's... I gonna, want to play both. Though. It's going to depend. I'm definitely choosing Overwatch if it has to be one of the two, but me being me, I'll probably buy both. So, um, yes. But if I had to pick one, it'd probably be Overwatch. But I don't know. There's nothing preventing us from playing both. And I think the, the difference between the two as well, I'm going to... I'm going to call this now. I think that Doom will be extremely fun for a shorter period of time, whereas Overwatch will probably last a bit longer as far as our group goes. So It's just, it's, the, you know, jumping on. At the moment, we have so many games. I mean, it's even happened just before when we were all online playing Helldivers, cramming for our final exam, mm. if you will. Everyone was like, well, what are we going to play? I don't know. You can play any of one of these seven games. And be like, oh, I don't know. And like, none of us really decide on one game we all want to play. It takes an extraordinary effort. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I, at least we're anyway. at the point now where the group is big enough that we have a few on rotation and we've usually got a solid chance of finding everybody to agree on one or the other each night. So that's maybe, okay. Maybe. Yeah. We need to have first a First world gamer problems. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Someone spin. just spins. No, we just need to have nights of the week. Like Tuesday night is jams night. Uh, you get to choose what game you play. Uh, Monday night uh, is somebody else. And then, you know, a boring night. That could be Luke's night. <laughs> <laughs> the oh. night everyone's busy. <laughs> or we could just do what we're doing now and play Wednesday whatever the hell we Wednesday want. Wednesday nights could be Luke's night. <laughs> yeah, Luke's night. That. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Shots Luke, fired. Luke, gets, Luke gets every night, but only from midnight to 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> it's Wednesday night. Oh, we're recording. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shame. <laughs> shame, shame. Guys are terrible. That's a shame. Anyway, speaking of things that are terrible, what have you been playing, Jan? Oh, it hurts, man. It hurts deep. Um, so, my Minecraft house is looking fabulous. I still have some interior decorating to do, but I now have a outdoor smithy and stable mm-hmm. and a little outdoor garden, and they're all cut into the side of the mountain, and it's amazing. Mm. And I think I'm going to add a kitchen near the That's garden because uh, that makes sense. extra remodeling work that you needed to do, though. Last well, week. Damn it, Imogen. I, really I was hoping I could get away with this. <laughs> no, 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 no well, you're a dick. <laughs> so the reason, the reason my beautiful new house has had so much of my focus is because I went on a mapping quest. I was like, oh, I'm going to uncover almost all of this map that no, we've no, um, no, situated ourselves. No, 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 no. you got to start hang this on, story from on, the beginning. Hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on. So I was You'll in the middle right of nowhere. Loop, just- in the middle of nowhere, running around, and it's late, and it just passes midnight, and I don't know, it was about eight minutes past 12, 
And Luke convinces me, oh, my God, Penny Arcade have just announced they're breaking up. Now, it took five solid minutes, even though Luke tried to give me a hint, which I didn't follow the link. Five solid minutes to go, wait a minute, it is April 1st. And I felt like a twit because I should never believe anything that comes out of Luke's mouth. I mean, I should have learned this by now, surely. But I was, you know, upset. And I thought, oh, no, Penny Arcade, no more comment. Comics. Pax is going to maybe suffer. Anyway, I casted him. I laughed. I got over it by building a clay penis on his house. <laughs> in Minecraft. I should say. You, yeah, you should specify. As you do. <laughs> and it was limp. And it looked funny. It actually looked pretty horrible because it was in survival and I had limited resources. But I was like, ha ha, lol, funny. And then I went back out on my exploring. To uncover the map. So I was a fair way away. And Luke found it and he knocked it down and it was all like her 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 her. So <laughs> next day, I'm out exploring. Can I, can I just ask a question too? Like me me actually knocking down a clay penis on my house, is that considered masturbatory or not? Uh so I'm out exploring. If that is your masturbation, then I am very concerned. <laughs> and I get to a point and I have five wolves which I've managed to find and I have all this cool stuff because I've been out there for days. And one of our friends is having connection problems or something. I go to Google it. I get blown up by a creeper. And I think, oh, shit. Oh, no. Because it spawns me at this remote little hidey hole I built with a bed to protect myself one night to make the night pass quickly. So I start legging it towards my house, thinking I have to gear up and run back out to where I was. I should be able to see where the map dropped. I think I know where I was so that I can grab all my cool stuff. Get to my house. I'm running up the path. Oh, there's a dead block on my path. Enderman probably dropped it there. Punch it, see something fall, and go, oh, shit. It hits the pressure plate. My entire path explodes with dynamite and kills me and a bunch of my wolves. Um, yes, because it spawns me back out at my little hidey hole, and I have nothing. <laughs> you just run all the way back from. <laughs> and then I have to run all the way back to my house again to find this enormous crater that magically just missed my house and just miss my mind where I store things and I had everything despawn and couldn't find my stuff. So that's Luke being funny. So oh, funny. Hilarious. So what you're saying Luke is a cool guy. <laughs> oh, I was so upset. Cool I was so upset because we all agreed to be cool. And because that's nothing, nothing in comparison to building stupid little clay penis. I'm sorry. Knocked down. You could have taken out her house Easily. You had no way yeah. of knowing how big that is. That yeah. got really close to her actual house. Super close. So, so should I so my, Should I rebut now or should I wait until I talk about no, my damage? No, no, no. I'm sorry, but you cannot justify this. I was yeah. creative. You also surrounded my, my spawn point with carpet so that I wouldn't spawn there. So. No, I did not. Yes. That was not me. Well, who else did? Wait, it was not Mm-mm. me. It was definitely you. No, it was not me. I would I would happily admit to that level of trolling like I usually admit to any level of trolling, but unfortunately, that was not me. So you still have a phantom out there that you need to hunt down. Because it ever. was not myself. Don't believe Nobody you. else knows where I am. I, I, I have not been to your base yet. I know roughly where it is, but I've not been there yet. You did when you put down the carpet around my bed. Anyway, back to my story. <laughs> I picked up all my valuable shit and I've legged it and I found a cute remote place that's nearly a whole map away from Luke and started building a pretty house. He didn't tell me. He copied my map already. So he just went and looked for me and found where I was building my new house and now I'm upset. But not really because it's a fabulous house. So I showed it here, kids, is don't play with Minecraft with Luke. And even if he says, look, we'll go survival, no funny business, won't use admin controls, he lies. It's just who he is as a person. Wow. Not true. Not true. <laughs> so what we've learned is Luke is a bad man. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. More on that when we talk about hell divers later. <laughs> yeah. So okay, so I played Minecraft. <laughs> um, I've played some Rocket League and Division. Move or Die is hilarious. So I didn't have Ollie's woes, although uh, the first time I played with uh, four three other friends of ours. Another person had some connectivity issues, but then it magically fixed itself. So fingers crossed. I didn't mind magically fix itself. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's so it's hilarious. You're just these four little things on screen and each round has a different objective and they're so fast. Like one of them's a speed run uh, and it's all two dimensional 
some of them slightly side scrolly. So in speed run, you just start running along, all four of you trying to beat each other to the finish line. But if you die, that's it. You're dead. You're out. That's the case of most of them. Case with most of them. But the funniest thing is, if your little dude stops running across the floor too much, his health just diminishes so quickly. That's why it's called move or die. So you got to keep running, and jumping doesn't count. So is it so actually, is, is it actually much, a rhythm game, or health. is it something else entirely? No. It's something else entirely. There's just um, these little obstacles. One of them's I've got a vanishing floor thing, so it might have multi-levels, and you're all standing around, and the blocks vanish one by one. Mm-hmm. So you're running around. You have to keep running, so sometimes the blocks shrink so much you're just trying to go back and forth really, really fast. Also, not getting pushed off by other people. Other ones have bombs dropping from the ceiling. Other ones have these little guns where you've got to try and shoot each other, but you can only shoot when you're airborne. And you can't control the direction because you have to shoot while you're spinning. There are so many, and I've hardly seen a fraction of them, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. It's Luke, hilarious. Luke, context, have you ever played Battle Block Theatre? No. Or seen Battle Block Theatre? No. Oh, no. Okay. I, well, it's I'm very sure similar I've to that. It. Okay. Yeah. you got to play it. Achievement you Hunter did it. a hilarious video. It was buttloads of fun. Also, CNN has, has done some great videos in it as well. Cool. Which is why I was so really upset that I couldn't join. Mm. We'll fix yeah. it. Fix it. We'll make it better. Yeah. Goodness knows, no, my laptop, I'll never join. Mm. Never see me. <laughs> <laughs> and I played some Hell Divers, so that was my week. Nice. All right, well, I'll start with my rebuttal to uh, the Minecraft April Fool's oh. shenanigans. All right, so I'll say up front. I don't know that you get a rebuttal, actually. Oh, look, I, I get a rebuttal. Whether you agree with it or not is entirely up to you. Um, I will mm. I will say up front that uh, as far as the level of escalation goes, I will hand over heart, admit that I took things a little far. <laughs> So, how about so, so for that, I Wait, apologize. Too far. <laughs> but I will try and explain my mindset sort of going into it. So at, at the end of the day, played played a very, very simple prank on Jamie after just after midnight, which is the, the Penny Arcade thing, which she, she fell for because, uh, you know, getting April fooled five minutes after midnight, it's a tough one to avoid unless you're actually prepared for it, which I pretty much always am. I was, cause... Yeah, I was exhausted. <laughs> and I was a bit devo because my brain wasn't functioning at that hour. <laughs> so, so what Jamie's is basically saying is that, yes, she was an uh, easy target, which is exactly why I picked it. But anyway, mm-hmm. so um, anyway, that that aside, she she uh, decides the, the following day to, to create this clay penis on my house. I'm just like, OK, now this is where the problem began. Do you actually understand how to craft a proper April Fool's gag? Do you... uh, I thought you were going to go somewhere else with that question. No, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. To the, the are you, are, point. Are you, All right, are I, you saying that you know no, how to? No, Luke. I, I don't know that that was... lame. I love April Fool's, but the reason why I love April Fool's is because the whole point is that you have to fool someone. It has to be some sort of act of deception that requires somebody to actually fall for something and believe something to be true that's not, or get you know um, pull, you know pulled out of their their system of belief to think that something is accurate when it's not, or something like that. You actually have to have some sort of act of deception. Building a clay penis on somebody's house is not an act of deception. It's an act of vandalism. I would I would I argue agree. that uh, by blowing up something like a massive crater in nearly someone's house, also not an act of foolery. Which was the mm. exact point. So Jamie decides to make something no, that's going to create a whole bunch point, of mess. So I retaliated point, by creating a whole something? bunch of mess. So no, that was probably my fascinating dogs. to everybody listening. <laughs> I know, right? Anyway, so, know, right? so my, my typical response was, okay, J- Jamie's going to vandalize something in mine. I'm going to leave a little present for her over on that path there near her house. So I did measure it out carefully, made sure that nothing was going to get impacted except for a dirt path, and that's exactly how it played out. But anyway. You measured it out I carefully. Like I actually that time did, you made sure that the Ender Dragon wasn't spawned in the overworld. Uh-huh. Well, that's an entirely different Twice. case. So Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, all right. So that aside, the um, <laughs> the cool thing with Minecraft over the last week, and I've been playing a bunch more of it, is that on the weekend, my son Benjamin, um, who is now six, actually got given to him as a gift um, by myself and my wife um, his first ever PC. So um, my Yay. wife wife Lisa sort of uh, upgraded her laptop recently and so had a spare laptop, which was still reasonably current, sort of sitting to one side. And so because um, he's going to need it at some point in the future with his schooling and just generally learning about computers and that sort of thing, we decided to, to reformat it and give it to him as a bit of a gift. So 
Um, and of course, the first thing I installed on it besides Windows is Minecraft because he's an absolute Minecraft fanatic. And for a six-year-old, he knows the game exceptionally well. He even Yay. has his own favorite Minecraft YouTubers, which is something that I wouldn't expect all of the kids his age to, to really be that familiar with. Oh, a few of them are, but yeah. And he can hold his own. Like I was actually playing on console with him a couple of weeks ago. We were actually, you know, having a a one on one combat um, sort of in Minecraft, and he whooped my ass. So he does pretty good. Now the the big step for him was um, not only sort of getting his head around using a PC. So you know um, where he's not used to using mouse and keyboard. You know, and for his age and you know his size hands, it's not an easy thing. It's not just about learning what buttons to push it's about having a hand that's actually physically big enough to hold the parts of the keyboard you need to to play the game properly so that, that was interesting sort of getting his head around that was, was cool to watch and he, he's picked it up pretty quickly um but then the other thing was that we actually decided to let him join the server where myself and all of you guys play and uh, you know a six-year-old jumping into a um, group of people playing online who are adults who he knows but are still you know on a totally different level to him as far as gaming goes that's a pretty big step for a little guy. So had a bit of a chat to him beforehand about, you know, what the expectations were. So basically don't do what daddy does. And <laughs> I was going to say, how did you explain boundaries? Monkey scene or monkey two. Yeah, well, that, that was the other reason for setting that trap on your path because it was a really good way to show Ben what not to do. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. Well, this is right. the line, watch daddy cross it. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that aside, so I basically, you know, laid down the law. I said, you know, don't don't touch things that aren't yours. Don't, um, you know, steal from other players. You know, if someone um, wants help with a build, make sure you ask them first. You know, all that sort of stuff. So the basic stuff. And um, and then he hopped on and had a bit of a play. And uh, Jamie, you spent a bunch of time sort of playing with him because you gave him the grand tour of your house. So how do you yeah. feel he picked it up? He is a natural. Hmm. He's a natural. He was fantastic. And he was much better behaved than his father. <laughs> 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 Wouldn't have been hard. Yeah. It was good. He had all these questions. And then when he saw what I was doing, he was suggesting ideas. It was great. And then he went, um, he was there when I built my nether portal for the first time. Yep. And yep. we went through and discovered that it linked to someone else's. So that was fun. Yeah. 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 It was great. So there was one moment where he really surprised me, actually, which was uh, I've got a nether portal um, down below in my base as well. And um, I built a, uh, a lava moat in front of it to sort of stop stuff from coming through by accident. Um, and uh, I did that completely unaware that the zombie pigmen that are actually native to the nether don't actually die in lava. Now, the reason why I'd never noticed that before is because I'd often seen them fall off into lava and die. But in hindsight, the reason why that must have been happening is because of the height that they were falling as opposed to the lava itself killing them. Um, so they that were was dilute. They just disappeared. Well, oh, that's no. I don't know about that, but there There's was no falling damage into water. If, yeah, but it's not water; it's lava. Does that work the same way? Anyway, that's probably this yeah. is besides the point. So God, um, learn to play, noob. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so anyway, a um, a zombie pigment somehow made its way through the portal into my base, and I was sort of looking at it, and I I sort of activated the drawbridge, and it dropped into the lava, and it didn't die, and I was just like, huh. Okay, that's going to be a problem because I don't want to hit it because then it'll you know set all the zombie pigment off because once you hit one they all come hunting for you they hunt in packs you see, um, and I was sort of at a loss as to what to do and Ben sort of being in my base at the time and, and having a look he basically just turns to me and says Dad why don't you just push it back through I was like, huh that actually might work so I just walked up to it and physically just using the, my body on screen just shoved it through the portal and it went straight back through I was like wow Ben that is really clever well done so yeah. Problem solving by a six-year-old, sorting problems like that yeah, out. That was ben. really impressive, yeah. Woo. So that was a proud proud dad moment. That was that was really cool. Um, all right, so besides Minecraft, I've actually been playing... I say besides Minecraft. I've been playing Minecraft Story Mode Episode 5. Because <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't besides had enough Minecraft. Minecraft. Other yeah. forms of Minecraft. That's right. So the Telltale Games um, game, which uh, we've discussed a little bit on the show before. So kind of weird how they left off the end of episode four because, uh, A, it was months and months and months ago. I think it was actually nearly six months ago that that um, was out now. Um, actually, it can't be six yep. months because it, it was since we've been doing the show. So It was just it was just before Christmas that yeah. last episode came out. It was out. a while. Yep. So let, let's call it three or four months. I think it was probably closer to four. But anyway, and the way they left it off, they could have actually ended the series at the end of episode four. Like the, the, doing episode five was already advertised but probably not necessary in terms of the narrative they could have just ended it but of course as we uh, mentioned on the news recently telltale have announced that not only are they doing five they're also doing six seven and eight so they've obviously come up with a uh, a, a additional story arc that they want to tell 
I was uncertain as to whether five would kind of be standalone or whether it would be part of that new arc. And it makes me wonder whether the reason why they've done it is because they kind of were uncertain as to how to finish the series in the first place and they wanted to see whether it was successful or not before com- committing to more episodes or maybe they had plans for a season two and they've decided not to go along with it and just make this add-on instead i'm not quite sure what the reasoning is but um yeah i mean at the moment it's it's fun it's kind of it's more of the same as far as how the game plays um you i mean the the basic beats of the um the episode five story that you find a new type of portal and you end up going through to a sky city um which uh, is pretty cool some really uh, awesome scenery i've been sort of as i've been playing the game sort of uh, snapshotting images on my ipad thinking to myself okay i'll just keep an image of that and i'll try and build that later um which is a cool thing to do um but the the nice twist with the story at this particular place that you go is that in this um palace this sky city is actually a uh, a ban on building and it's against the law to build so it's about how the characters actually kind of navigate through that sort of situation and how they get out of it when they're not actually allowed to build anything without sort of, you know, getting thrown in jail, essentially. So, um, yeah, spoilers. it's interesting. I feel like you just bought that for me. Freaking spoilers. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks. That's not a cool massive guy. spoiler. Hey, the, oh, the, the, the trailers for episode geez. five pretty much show that amount. So I haven't given you any more than the trailers have. So there you go. I haven't seen the trailers. Oh, well, I don't watch the trailers. <laughs> Anywho, I won't tell you anymore. So, um, yeah, it's kind of cool. I don't know what they're going to do for the rest of it. We'll wait and see. Also been playing Helldivers, of course. And because I wrapped up Metal Gear last week, I have sort of been ready for a, another big time sink. And if Minecraft wasn't enough, um, I have been eyeing off a little game for a while called uh, Stardew Valley, which I finally put the money down on the other night and, uh, and downloaded and started playing. Um, kind of knowing that it was going to be another massive crack injection that was probably going to have me addicted for a while. And I was right, because that game is really, really legit. So, um, and Jamie, you've just started playing it tonight, haven't you? I have. I was going to mention it because, yeah, I've only put in maybe two hours. Yeah. But yeah, it's good fun. So I'm probably two up to a hours. I tried to stop you both. I, got I tried to stop you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, look, man, I tried to stop myself. I, I had literally been looking at it on the Steam store for about three weeks now. And now that I've Ditto. actually got a slight spot on my uh, gaming schedule, if you like, I, I just went, okay, this is going to happen. It's just a matter of when. So I chose to do it now. Um, on two separate occasions, my cursor was hovering over the buy now button or whatever it is uh, yeah. before I finally gave tonight. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, <laughs> our friend Dave has uh, picked it up as well and has been playing it pretty much nonstop and, and having a lot of fun a lot. with it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, the game is really, really stupidly good. And I think I'd like to talk about it in a bit more detail, um, possibly next week. But um, it, it is a game that is, it's kind of like a community building slash farming simulator slash role playing adventure game. And there is absolutely loads that you can do in it and it is stupid fun really really easy to play just one more day just one more day just one more day um and uh without going into too much details one of the things that i really like about the game so far is that you've actually got a limited amount of energy that your character can spend each day which means that you can't actually get as much done as you want because you have to spend your energy resource really wisely to get a certain amount of tasks done um, and how you sort of conserve that energy by um, avoiding certain things on certain days, like, you know, when it rains, you don't have to water your crops, for instance, um, is a big part of the game strategy. So, yeah, it's really, really cool. Um, probably about eight hours in or so now, I think. So, yeah, decent chunk of time. I'm nowhere near done for, with that game, though. I'm going to be playing that for a while, I think. So, yeah. Um, oh, bye, Luke. It was nice knowing you. Yeah. <laughs> was it, though? I, I think it's... It? <laughs> yeah. Wow, such you a know. Big... Recent evidence says no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I did Upon to review. deserve. Actually, on hindsight, I probably did what um, I did to deserve. Yeah, yeah, you know <laughs> yeah. exactly what mm-hmm. you did. I did. All right. So anyway, that's recent game. Shall we um, jump into some, some news of the week? We better before we get more salty about you. Yeah. Well, Imogen, we got Blizzard stuff up first, so you want to dive into that? Woo! Uh, my favorite topic. Mm. Um, we had a new uh, animated short released for Overwatch this week. Uh, it was featuring Widowmaker, although I would argue it's sort of equally, I guess, Tracer as oh, yeah. well, yeah. which is really interesting. It is fantastic and amazing. <sighs> Weirdly enough, I found it a lot more cartoony than the previous one. Oh. It felt more like I was watching Saturday Disney than the first one. The first one felt a bit kind of more gritty, I guess, okay. for lack of a better description. I don't know. 
but I, it was good. What did you guys think? Loved it. Mm. Yeah. Very cool. Think it was Ollie watching it now? Uh, of course I am. Yeah, okay. Let, <laughs> let's pretend you. So it also sort of gave us a lot of info, I think, in terms of the world that we're looking at and, and why these two sides are going to be opposing one another. Hmm. Which is really interesting, which I won't spoil because yeah. I think people should go and watch it. But mm. each short is kind of giving us a little bit of background as to why these two teams of heroes are fighting each other, yeah. which I find really interesting. They're doing really well at creating the world and already quite invested in a number of characters. You see, again, a lot of little hints and drops in there about various characters we've seen or heard of before. Um, of course, we've seen most of the Overwatch team in the first one when they are called to action and from where in the world they are, and, yeah, just looking forward to more. It's just making me more excited for the game. Yeah. I friggin' love this short. It just blew my mind when I saw it. I was just, like, nerding out in a massive, massive way. I mean, Tracer, I think, is probably my favourite Overwatch character at the moment, and I don't know what it is. There's something about it, just this, you know, cheeky innocence. You know, the, the character's just really, you know, fun, I think, is probably the best way to describe it. I, I really, really dig it. The um, short... She seems fun. <laughs> yeah, she, she does. She seems really fun. She seems quite jovial, yeah. But, yeah, the short was just sensational. And um, it did show off a whole bunch of Trace's abilities, which were super rad. Um, her time jump sort of stuff that she can do, I don't know how that's going to work in game because I haven't played the beta, but, oh, my God, it looks good in the, the uh, animated shorts. Um, but Widowmaker, oh, my God. So Widowmaker, um, I mean, obviously, is the name of a spider, and the whole theme of the video, the video is called Alive, and it's basically um, she starts comparing herself to a, a spider very early on um, to sort of you know give a bit of a background as to who she is. But the, um, the thing that I noticed watching it is that a lot of the way she behaved and the way her weapons worked and her abilities and stuff, very, very good use of the spider sort of theme. So, you know, she fires a grappling hook and wraps it around a leg and basically hangs upside down to take a sniper shot, you know, very, very spider-esque. Uh, the headset that she wears has a whole bunch of irises on it, sort of like the spider's multifaceted eyes and how she uses that and everything. Just really awesome. Just love the whole way the character was portrayed. They put a whole bunch of thought into it, so... Yeah, huge fan. I can't wait to see the next one. They've got two more, I think. So I think it's anyone's guess as to who they feature on the next two. Because um, the, they've kind of... Like the very original one that they released at BlizzCon a couple of years ago was the four characters that they've shown already, isn't it? So they had Winston. They had... Uh, I forget who the the sort of skull mask um, bad guy is that we had in the Winston video. They had Tracer and they had Widowmaker in that original short. I think that was the only four, wasn't it? So any characters shown in the next one that aren't those four will be totally new, if I'm not wrong. Is that... No, well, in the first short, the Winston, he had the whole screen of all of the Overwatch and we got a little shot of each of those and where in the world they were. So yeah, yeah. we've had little headshots of them, yeah. But not, but nothing sort of, you know, big, um, big feature style, so... Um, I, w I would be betting that one of the characters they might feature in one of the shorts, whether it's, you know, fully focused on or just featuring, will probably be McCray, who's the uh, the Wild West style sort of gunslinger, because um, he seems to be a reasonably big part of the core character lineup. But aside from that, I am totally no idea. We'll have to wait and see. So... Um, but there's a lot of really cool characters that I'd love to see them do proper shorts for. And I'm, all, I'm almost only, I'm really sad there's only going to be four of them. I, I'm sure they'll do more in future, but, you know, obviously the big spend is coming now because they're trying to promote the game upon release. And I have to wonder how long it'll take before we see Blizzard go to this kind of effort for the game again after it's actually launched. But, you know, one can only hope. So we will see. Mm, I think the last shot will be everybody. It'll be a full out battle. Oh, that'd be um, cool. Between the two teams. I think that's the only way it has to go. Mm. And maybe the next one will be from the perspective of one character meeting up with a whole bunch. Yeah. We'll see. That could work. We will see. So um, speaking of uh, Blizzard and uh, Tracer, we also got the reveal of Tracer um, as in a character for the Heroes of the Storm game as well. So I think we, we kind of knew Woo, that this was coming a little while ago. Yeah, yeah, here is this one. <laughs> that, that one that we'll probably go back to at some point when we're not playing Minecraft and all these other t massive time sinks. Everyone so. keeps telling me that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a couple of interesting things about um, Tracer in, in HOTS, um, one being that she's apparently going to be the first character that can actually shoot while she moves, um, whereas every other character is kind of limited in their mobility when they're attacking, which is uh, a bit different. Um, and she starts with her ultimate abilities and she actually upgrades her ultimate throughout the game as opposed to having to wait until she, she gets it at all. So that's pretty cool. 
And uh, yeah, it just you know, it's the first Overwatch character in in Heroes, so that's going to be the first of many. I suspect I wouldn't be surprised if just about all of them make it to Heroes eventually. So that'll be mm. cool. I think it's interesting. It's she's a really good fit with the um, characters from StarCraft. Like it's thematically, she kind of fits really well. Mm. Um, which I guess is just Blizzard obviously having a, a, a think about it. Like she's not going to look out of place. It's not going to look bizarre next to the the Warcraft world or even the Diablo world. She's not going to look that bizarre next to so. Be yeah. interesting. Yep. Um, cool, cool. All right, so what else have we got on the list tonight? Um, News-wise, we've got some Division, Division stuff. Division. Yeah. So, yeah, Division. Everyone remember that game? I'm sure we talked about it recently. I do. Yeah. Nah. So um, Division Endgame, uh, you know, a lot of people have uh, complained about it being a little lacking and there has been sort of stuff added um, since the game has been released. But we're coming up on the first big planned um, sort of additions for the division and there's a couple of things that hadn't really been announced beforehand that it looks like um, Ubisoft is going to give a go um, one of which being that there's actually going to be a new um, in-game weekly challenge series so there's a, uh, a new thing coming out called Operation Isaac um, which has something the acronym stands for something which uh, Intelligent System Intelligent. Analytic Computer yeah that's the one oh, beat me to it yeah okay. so um, yeah and uh, basically it's going to be like additional weekly missions that you can do for uh, you know a higher level of gear um, and in line with that apparently there's going to be a change coming to the game very shortly where the crafting system for the really high end gear is going to change so that you need a lot more of it to craft so if you've got anything crafting material wise at the moment um, use it very quickly because it's not going to be worth as much very very soon you're going to need a lot more of it to get the, the gear that you want so there you go um, and the incursions are going to be hitting I think it's next week it's coming out real soon so April 12th yep that's the one cool so, uh, yeah, um, the first incursion that's coming is apparently called Falcon Lost, um, and it's aimed at high-level players. Unsurprisingly, you need roughly sort of level 31 gear to be capable of taking it on, um, and uh, the, they've got a whole bunch of information um, on the Ubisoft side about other um, sort of incursions that might be planned. So check it out. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> I, I'll probably continue taking a short break from Division and jump back in when this stuff actually goes live because... Uh, I still love the game, but I, I'm kind of getting distracted by other stuff at the moment. So, yeah. Mm. All right. We also, on the news, have some Final Fantasy 15 stuff. Now, just quick show of interest from you guys. Is anyone besides me going to play this game? No. 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 Jamie? Unlikely. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, anyway, Final Fantasy know. games, usually a pretty big deal. This one is a game that's been in development for about 10 years. There's been a long-running story about the amount of work that's gone into this one. Um, supposedly, cost about, it's cost them about $10 million plus to make. And, Jesus. Uh, yeah, yeah, massive. Like, they, they need to ship a ridiculous... Actually, it's a $10 million? No, I've got that number wrong. The $10 million number I'm thinking of is they, they've quoted that they need to sell about 10 million units um, in order to make their money back on the development or something like that. So probably cost even more to make. But yeah, it's been going on for a while. So, who, I mean, who knows where that money spend's actually been going. But um, they have decided to double down on it by producing some additional uh, content and they're doing an animated movie and a CG short for the launch. So that's something a bit different. Um, we haven't really seen anything like that from, um, you know, any of the makers of Final Fantasy um, since, I think, FF7 when they did, um, what was the movie called for Final Fantasy VII? Oh, the Cloud versus Sephiroth fight thing? The Advent Children, that was the one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the animated series for this one is being created by animation studio A1 Pictures, um, and they've worked on a, a bunch of stuff like uh, you know Valkyria Chronicles 3, Sword Art Online, if anyone rec recognizes those. Um, apparently, it's mm -hmm. going to span five episodes, and you'll be able to stream it for free from YouTube, which is pretty cool. And the first episode is already up, so you can watch it now. Um, and there is a additional one. So they're actually working on a CG animated feature film, which is going to be called King's Glaive Final Fantasy XV. Um, and the interesting thing about Kingsglaive is it's actually going to feature the voice talent of a few people that you might recognise. So Sean Bean, uh, Lena Headey. So uh, well, and what's that? Game of Thrones. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I know Lena Headey mostly as uh, Sarah Connor for the Sarah Connor Chronicles. But yeah, if you know Game of Thrones, you'll recognise her as uh, Queen Cersei. Um, and also Aaron Paul, who uh, was um, from Breaking Bad. So everyone probably remember him as uh, the sidekick from Breaking Bad. Yep. I can't actually remember his name. God damn it. How long has it been since that show was on? And I can't even remember his freaking name. 
Uh, Jesse, I'm not going to tell Pinkman. you this is too funny. It. Damn it. Jesse Pinkman. Yeah. Get old. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So yeah, um, even if you're not going to get the uh, the game, you can still watch some of the stuff online, which would be kind of cool. So there you go. And did we actually want to do an upgate, 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 an update on Buttgate? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about it. I don't want to get yelled at by Ollie again. No, I don't want to yell at people, so I'm done. I, I'm, I'll I, yell at Luke. I want to listen to Ollie yell. So Imogen, I think you're the only one qualified to really talk about it. What's going on no, with that? I don't guy? want. Why am I? Oh. Okay. Can yeah. I explain why I get angry about this? I think you did. So last we explain large... what it is first. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't. So a large chunk of my work is dealing with trivial shit that gets blown out of proportion by other people, and me actually making them realize that it's just trivial shit. So when it happens in real life, it annoys the crap out of me. So that's why I was so salty last week. Yeah. Moving on. All right. So what we're actually talking about is what we talked about in our last episode, which is the Tracer butt gate issue about the pose not fitting the character. And so Blizzard have now changed that and released uh, a new picture, which uh, you guys have labeled strut gate. Uh, she's effectively doing like a one legged butt kick, still a little bit of cheeky over the shoulder action going on there, but I don't, know if it's you know that's their sort of interpretation of cheeky for me this is really getting to the point now where i would not have noticed it if no one had said anything so it's getting a bit exhausting now having photos floating around the internet of what she looks like now and is that appropriate and those types of things and i'm well on board for you know you know proper female armor and on all of that which overwatch seems to have nailed mostly um, but yeah, um, it, it's getting a little bit out of control at this stage. Yeah, I think it's hilarious. I, I'm just, I mean, both poses are sort of shots from behind, one of which is kind of a bit more front on, one of them is kind of not. I'm just wondering if there's a, a pie chart or a Venn diagram or something in the Blizzard offices that actually have a science behind how much cheek is actually acceptable to show in pictures like this. The Venn diagram just looks like a butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I mean, it's still a butt shot. Like, if anyone was like, yes, I agree with this guy, there should be no butt shots. Like, they're not winning. That's The Blizzard haven't said yes to no butt shots. They've just gone, didn't suit the character, so we'll make it less sexy, more cheeky. It's, yeah. it's a, That's it's a different up. focus. Before it... It appeared that the focus was check my butt out. Now it's like, hee hee, I'm prancing, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it looks fine. I just don't care enough anymore. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I, I have no horse in this race. Anyway. <laughs> I'm starting to slowly slide off the care wagon. <laughs> <laughs> On, onto uh, the Zero Fox see the wagon and <laughs> see it. All right. That's probably enough for now. Anyway, should, we, should we dive into our, our party game of the month review? Woo! Into hell. Yeah. Into hell. We really need like a sound here. Blah, blah, blah. So, so from uh, from livestock and <laughs> and uh, live, you know, and farming of corn and other vegetable products, we're going to move into lead farming because there's a hell of a lot of shooting in this game. Oh my god! So, all right, hell divers. Yeah. Um, very very brief overview of the game. So, it's a top down shooter. Uh, was originally developed for consoles and released, if I'm not mistaken, in March 2015 last year. Um, later came to PC uh, around the end of the year. I think it was around somewhere between October, December. Um, and of course, it's available to purchase via Steam. I cannot recall how much it is, but I think it's around the 30 US dollars mark. Am I on the money there? Can't it was 20 US. 20 US? All right, cool. So there you go. And uh, yeah, so the game itself, Ollie, how would you describe the setting? Because I think you had a good, good uh, term for it last time we spoke about it. The way I described it was if Halo, ODST, and Warhammer 40,000 had babies with Diablo, they would make this game. Yeah, that makes sense. That's an apt description. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that a lot of the mechanics of those games kind of are represented in small ways in Helldivers as well. So mm. you, the, the interesting um, thing with the setting is that it's a very Starship Troopers-esque sort of inspired... Warhammer 40K. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, true, true. Um, I, I mean, there's definitely sort of beats from each of those kind of taken. I mean, they, they share a lot of stuff to begin with, so it's not surprising. Um, so you, you play a human tro- trooper who is part of the the Hell Divers, uh, a military organization of whatever they call it, and you are fighting the for the yeah, the army. They are fighting for the the rights of the human race on a place called Super Earth, which is basically Earth as you know it. Um, taken over by a faux democratic political regime that brainwashes the 
crap out of the populace and, you know, basically fights for the human race to the exclusion of all others. Um, Very tongue in cheek. Yeah. It's hilarious. The it is cheesy, the over the top propaganda yeah. in the world yeah. kind of. Uh, we bring it democracy with bullets. Yep. Yeah. It's so entertaining. What, what was the main yeah, the, they, game called? Was it Democracy Strikes Back or something like that? I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Helldivers Democracy. Something. Yeah, I can't remember. But, the, the, yeah, they use the word democracy for effectively blowing shit up. Yeah. <laughs> That's democracy. Very democratic. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We had a vote and the vote is for you to die. Boom. Yeah, just blowing stuff up left, right, and center. It's a massive carnage game. Like the amount of destruction that you rain down on screen is is hilarious. Um and there's loads of different ways to do it. So um but one of the reasons cuz uh, I mean it was it was sort of my pick for the the game suggestions of the month. The re- the reason why I picked it is because a lot of the stuff that I heard about it late last year sort of echoed around the fact that apparently it was a very very good multiplayer game online. Um, and uh, if you look at it from the opportunity of, you know, playing with friends, especially over voice chat combined with that as well, it should be, you know, a ton of fun. So um, we hadn't had as much of a chance to play multiplayer until sort of, you know, just recently. Um, I think most of us sort of kicked off playing this game single player, and I, I've noticed that there's a big difference between the two. Um, so, I mean, should we just go in a full circle and see what everyone's experiences were sort of loading I, up the game and getting the head around I would it? like to interject hmm? and question you, Luke, sure. on your definition of friendly fire. <laughs> <laughs> Friend, what friendly is your fire definition? <laughs> Just the Friend- worst. <laughs> Seriously. All right, so I did confuse so, the hell out so, of you. Yeah. Yeah. What? He, he really did. He, he commented and said he wanted to play Friendly Fire and don't worry, uh, he wanted to play Hell Divers and don't worry, there is no Friendly Fire, so we can't, you know, kill each other kind of thing. In well, fact, that was what was implied. No, no, So we jumped no. on. That's and exactly he the words are. Us. There is no Friendly Fire, which means yeah. we can't shoot each other. Okay. Right? So in hindsight. See, the meaning I got from Luke was that, that, that no fire he would be shooting is friendly. That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> All right. Well, that's not at all vague. Yeah. No. No, no. I mean, you, you, you are right. The, the way that you should say that is that, you know, I'm techni- friendly fire is when you can Cut hit out. each other as opposed to there being an absence of friendly fire. Um, but, yeah, what, what I meant was exactly what Ollie said, which was probably the wrong way to describe it. It was not friendly as opposed to it was not exactly fire. the wrong way. Yeah. So, yeah, you that was hilarious. Killed Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> So we, we should leave that for when we talk about the multiplayer. So, I mean, single-player um, impressions, Jamie, how, do you want to start? What, what did I've you think? I've only played multiplayer except for the tutorial. Okay, cool, cool. All yeah, right. You know. Ollie? Yeah, I've, I've only played the multiplayer. Oh, my God. You guys are the worst. <laughs> we run. That's where it gets fun. Oh, right. Good job, everybody. Game. Good job. Way to review. Solid right. effort. Well, no, no, it's fair. I mean, the game is designed as multiplayer being the selling point. So if you've all only played multiplayer, it's probably not a terrible thing. Um, all right, so the tutorial. Maybe let's focus on that. So, Ollie, what did you think of the tutorial? Did you play that? I did. Well, you have to, don't you? Uh, I'm pretty sure you have to. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's compulsory. Yep. Yeah, I enjoyed it because it's funny and it tells you how to play the game, mm. like a tutorial. <laughs> I, I don't know what you want out of that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what, are, what can you do? What are the basic controls of the game? So how do you play Helldivers? Okay, so it is a top-down isometric viewpoint. <laughs> And you have a single character that you can move around the screen and you can do stuff like shoot your gun. And you can also dive flat on the ground and then you can do some special abilities which involve, depending what you're playing on, I should say, because it does have um, controller support, will involve a combination of buttons to unlock, kind of like a a Street Fighter or a Mortal Kombat combo system. Yeah, like the old Mm. Konami code sort of thing. Mm, That's the way to put it. Mm. And that will give you different things that you can do with different cooldowns. And that, I actually really like that mechanism because it makes a very frantic mid-combat up, down, left, up, up. Oh, God, no, I stuffed the it. I put in a yeah. turret. <laughs> no, good. damn it. Yeah. Damn it, I got so, a no, grenade. I actually quite like it. It makes combat very frantic, which is what I enjoy about it. So interesting question on that for everybody. Who is playing on keyboard and who is playing with uh, console controller? So I'm using keyboard. Ollie, I'm assuming well, you're keyboarding. Yes, because um, keyboard and it sucks <laughs> controller so jamie yeah. you're using the xbox one controller i would take it uh-huh so ha- uh-huh. it's ha- fantastic have you tried the keyboard as well or just only controller uh i don't think so 
Okay. So h- how do you find the uh, the button combinations for those um, cooldowns on that? I'm actually wondering Great. which one's easier. Try, try both. I think I'm, I'm I answer. prefer controller. If there's an option, unless it really hampers uh, your ability to get to um, certain keys quickly, like I'd, I wouldn't use it if you had to string a whole bunch of button presses where, you know, on the keyboard it would just be one button. So but, are, are you um, using the thumbstick to move and the D-pad to put your control combinations in? Uh, yeah, and the right stick uh, rotates my aim. So in theory, and then, the us- is- using the controller will actually enable you to keep moving while you're putting the combination in. Uh, I tend not to. Okay. Because don't you usually have to be stationary? Uh, yeah. You, you hunker down typically- when you bring up that menu. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But it's I, I love it. I mean, I'm just so comfortable with the Xbox controller and I find mobility so much easier with the joysticks. I, I love it. And it also allows me to sit well back from my beautiful big screen in a comfy chair and enjoy. Fair enough. So basically each mission you are dropping down on a planet and the planets um, belong to one of three different sort of areas of galactic space. Um, and the three areas basically are different alien races that you're coming up against. So... Um, the three are, you've got the cyborgs, um, which are kind of like a, a very shooty, you know, half man, half machine um, sort of race that you, you're dealing against. Lots of mechanical monstrosities and that sort of thing. You've got the bugs, which are a very uh, sort of Starship Trooper bug slash uh, 40k Tyranid style force. Um, very fast moving, um, you know, very close combat focused uh, race, which doesn't tend to shoot you a lot, but tend to jump on you really fast and eat you. Um, and then the third one, which I've actually not come up against yet because my game has locked them out at the moment for some reason, um, is the Illuminate. Now, from what I know about the Illuminate, they are a very high-tech race. And apparently one of their special abilities is they can actually take control of your characters and force you to move and shoot in directions that you don't want to. So, Damn. yeah. Ooh. Have not come up against that yet, but I'm sure that's going to be frustrating right. as hell. Yeah. Are they just Protoss or Elder, basically? I haven't mm-hmm. seen them physically, but that's the vibe I'm getting. So um, I would not be surprised by that at all. You basically, you drop down on one of these planets and there's various different uh, missions available on each planet at different difficulty levels. Um, and different objectives you have to complete on each planet to sort of, you know, claim it and conquer it. Um, and the objectives can be a range of different things. I mean, um, we, we've come up against a few of them together, and um, I've, I've done a couple that I didn't see when we were playing earlier tonight. Uh, you've got some objectives that are kind of like a capture the flag type thing where you've got to move within range and, and sort of hunker down for a while until you, um, you know, the capture bar fills up and you, you claim that area. You've got... Uh, help me out. What, what other stuff have we, we done? Destroying plant the bomb. Yeah. yeah. Plant the bomb. Plant the bomb. So you've got to call down like an orbital strike type thing on different areas. Um, so you, the bug nest was a good one that you mentioned. Um, yeah, and then the satellite one. So you just got to reenact a satellite on the planet for, for kind of ops and information and stuff for, uh, yeah, for yeah. guidance. That was one of them. A couple of extras that I've come up against. There was one where you have to activate a SAM site. So, um, well, that's what that is. Oh, that's the one you're talking about? All right, cool, cool. Oh, yeah. Sam's the surface-to-air missile. Oh, you mean for the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool. Yeah, it's so cool. it doesn't actually shoot during the mission. It's kind of... It's just like a theme objective, basically. Um, yeah. I've also seen one where you actually need to dispose of some ordnance. So you basically run up and you pick up a suitcase-type object in, in one area, and then you have to run it over to, like, a facility which has a conveyor belt that you drop it on and it gets disposed of. Um, so that one was pretty cool. Um, that, that that's was- what Floofy was doing. Our random drop-in. Oh, really? I know, but Floofy's better. Um, Imogen, Imogen has trouble with the running with the keyboard. Mm. Oh, and running. It's just slower than yours. <laughs> we kept running up to the edge of the map and then waiting and waiting. But when he had to pick up the ordinance, it slowed him down. I was like, you can keep up, Imogen. Yay. It was very <laughs> similar to when you have to do those scenarios in the I division, the actually. It was, it was almost yeah, exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Um, The other one that I've played, which I don't know if you guys have seen yet, is there's actually like a Minesweeper one where you actually, there's like a marked off area on the map and uh, you you walk into that area and you actually have to call down a metal detector. It's one of your um, stratagems for for that um, mission. So you call down the metal detector, you equip it like you do one of your weapons, and then you actually have to sort of sweep it over this area of the map and and sort of, you know, see the pings. And when it pings enough and you locate one of the, the mines, you have to defuse it. Um, which, you know, again, has the the sort of button combination. Um, And once you've diffused three mines, then you finish that submission. So that was a kind of cool one. Really tricky because it takes a while and you have to sort of defend yourself um, 
you know, while you're doing the the pinging with the metal detector and you can't hold that and your gun at the same time. So that's one I think could definitely benefit from some multiplayer support. So one person can kind of watch your back while you do that, which would be really cool. I mean, the, the single player game is remarkably different to the multiplayer game because you really sometimes need someone to be watching your back and giving you some cover fire. Otherwise, it just gets ridiculously hard. And one of the things I noticed in particular is that when you're playing single player, you get the entire screen to yourself as far as seeing where the threats are coming from. When you play multiplayer, it actually gets a lot harder because especially if you spread out, you can't see that much past the edge of the screen. So, um, you know, the enemies can actually come on screen a lot quicker because they're virtually right on you when they appear. So um, that was an interesting difference as well. Sucks for the bugs. Yeah, oh yeah, mm. sucks bad for the bugs. Mm-hmm. Suck, sucks for any of them because one of the things that enemies on screen actually do is that when they see you, they sound the alarm and they call more of their friends in. Um, and of course, if you know they can see you before they're even on screen, there's really not much you can do about it. So um, you can kind of play the game stealthily and keep an eye on where they are on your map at all times, or you can you know play it with you know guns out, funds out, just blast away. So yeah, um, Imogen, what about you? What did you think of the game in general? Uh, really good. I do need to try and play it with a controller. My concern with the controller is that I'm not still not very good with the Xbox One with, with aiming. Mm. <laughs> so I thought that using a mouse would be easier, but given that my accuracy rate is pants anyway, I might as well just give controller a shot. Can't be any worse. Mm. Uh, but it's fun. I like it. I am pressing run, Jem. I, I, I showed <laughs> I you. I demonstrated you. this to you. <laughs> I, press it. I showed you walk and then I know. I run. It wasn't it's run. Slower. I don't know what it was. It was more slower. like a brisk stroll. Yes. <laughs> a power walk. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe maybe it's my direction because my direction is not as definite as yours in terms of using the stick. It's not as free. I have to sort Possibly. of press. But because to hold shift and then to press S at the same time and you know directionals it's really annoying. I really wish this game was just mostly clicking for direction like Diablo mm. yeah try the controller that, that's what I was thinking doesn't work so. very well with a ranged weapon that you aim around though no I agree so they are, obviously there's a reason for it but uh, yeah I'll have to try controller but I really enjoyed it I enjoyed um, had a lot of fun every time I've played it I played it just with Jam and I and that was lots of fun shooting stuff we were learning about you know making sure we ducked for cover and crawling around <laughs> and hugging the turret Hug the turret. Oh, man, the, the turret do all the work. The, Try not to get squished by the by the shuttle to come pick us up. The ducking for cover mechanic is awesome. I love that so much. So you, you can hit spacebar and basically go to ground, and that's really good for basically avoiding being shot by turrets that you call down onto the battlefield. Um, some enemies' or, you know, weapons, Luke. or yeah, like other players. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that guy. Loads of fun. Yeah. Yep. Um. Did we want to mention, you know, what Luke did by accident? Well, just oh, not well, mere been, moments ago. You, you've been because it starts off. You've been scorching me all night, so let's me. not end here. It's okay. So this is what our typical game pretty much runs like. We're on the bridge of someone's ship because when you're multiplayer, you end up flying to their bridge while they set the mission ship. up. I think it's our ship. Oh, our, our ship. ship. Like control. I don't know. Yeah, I missed that yeah. part of the story. <laughs> and then. Stuff. Someone, whoever's hosting, chooses the mission, and you all got to jump into little hell pods to drop down to the earth. And we're sitting there, and then we're yelling, Luke, Luke, hurry up, Luke, get in the hell pod, Luke. And then we drop onto the surface, and we all land. We start twirling to show off our capes because it makes it flare out nicely. And we see a little <laughs> pattern that we've chosen because we've dressed up. And then Luke shoots one of us, and we're dead. <laughs> no, and no, so no. Then, what happened was I was trying to figure out the stratagems. Well, yes. So Luke would shoot me, and I'll be dead, just for kicks. And then Imogen's sitting there trying to figure out how to revive me or, or call in reinforcements, which will bring me back. And it's not working, and she's getting frustrated. And then Luke will try and do it, and it'll work. But then Imogen's tried another stratagem, which lands something that's been deployed and squishes on someone. And so then we have to revive people again. And then there's more twirling, and then we start running, but we have to wait for Imogen to catch up because she can't run oh, with the shift that button. <laughs> Come on. And then suddenly there's a bug attacking Imogen, so we panically turn around and try and shoot to help her out and end up killing her. And so then we have to call in a revive for Imogen again. And, that, and then yeah. we'll get to a part where we kill a bug's nest, so we call in a massive, what's the missile thing called? The new... Uh, oh, the, the mega bomb. bomb or something? Yeah. 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 That's it. So we set that up and we stand there for a minute and then we go, oh, wait, we have to activate it. So someone runs up to activate it and then we start running away, but I don't get far enough and then I'm dead. 
<laughs> and then we get. You died a lot. You died. I know. And then we'll finish all of our objectives and we'll head to the extraction point and we'll summon it. We'll chuck down some turrets. We'll dive to the floor for cover and hug the turret so that the turret can spin around shooting all the bugs around us without killing us. And then, of course, I start crawling over to the extraction point and the carrier lands on me and squishes me and I'm dead <laughs> because I couldn't move fast enough to get out of it. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty much how a typical game runs. It's so well, entertaining. That was the first game that we played this evening. And oh. then the second game, I was like, right, I'm going to figure out the stratagem shit because I'm effectively useless at this point. I can't run, I can't shoot, and I can't figure out how to do this. So we sit down and we figure it out. I think I've done the right thing, but what I actually did was like throw out a grenade directly in front of Jam and I and we both die. <laughs> so Luke has that to bring us hilarious. back to life, but instead of bringing us back to life, he opens up multiplayer like looking for group <laughs> and we get a, a random person join us who he kills immediately. I was trying to summon you guys back but what I didn't realise is that what I actually threw out was an SOS beacon instead of a reinforce and that brings someone from the outside into the game and so they land in the game and I'm like oh didn't mean to do that let's clean up this mess and I just you know thought the best way to clean up that mess was to shoot the dude turns out didn't get rid of him he resurrected and then shot me so I was like huh Mm -hmm. right and Imogen and I sided with the other guy Yeah, we res- he rezzed us, and then we continued with our lives without Luke. <laughs> and so then I... you get extracted, and it's all happy fun times, and you get your experience, and you go back up to the ship, and then when people are ready to log off or disconnect from the game, the character just goes, bleh, <laughs> dies on the bridge. Yeah, like and it's just so you out of the Out of the, off the bridge. Yep. Fascinating. Oh, it's a very entertaining game. It's not afraid to laugh at itself, that's for sure. And it's so I'm challenging so with limited ammo. Hmm. That I did not get to play with you guys. <laughs> I think I would have just been angry the whole time. That's a, uh-huh. that's a fair bit. We were still learning. Yeah. It was fun. So a, I like it a lot. Ammo use in the yeah. game is really important. So you, you can actually yeah. reload um, sort of mid-clip, but if you do that, the, the remaining rounds in the clip are wasted, and you've only got yeah. a certain number of clips before you have to call down um, like a um, an ammo drop. And Mm -hmm. one of the tricks is that not all missions actually allow you to access your stratagems. Like I actually played a mission where there was like um, uh, atmospheric disruption and you couldn't call down any of your stratagems. So basically the ammo that you have for that mission is it. So you have to be really really careful and conserve it. Yeah. So a lot more stealth involved. Yeah. And you've got to be careful too. If if you see that your site uh, and someone else's is pointing at the same creature, mm. you pause because if they're going to take the shot, you don't want to take the shot and waste the ammo. But that also lets everything get that little bit closer. So there's this strategy of avoiding your friends, getting the creatures, but only the creatures that aren't covered yet. And, oh, yeah. it's it's wonderful. It's so chaotic. I there, love it. There are some creatures that you don't want to let get too close either. Like um, there's a, yeah. when you're fighting the cyborgs, there's actually a, a type of trooper that the cyborgs use, which is like a flame trooper. Um, and they start, you know, firing their flamethrower in a, an arc around themselves. If it catches you, you catch on fire. It takes off half your health. And as soon as the fire goes out, you drop down prone. So by that point, you've got dudes on you shooting you in the back as well. So it's really hard to get away from that. Like as soon as you catch on fire, you're just like, oh, crap, I'm done. Um, unless you have a miracle run away and can, you know, basically put some distance between the two of you and get up really fast. Um, so yeah, it's it's certainly not easy. There's a lot of challenge in the game. I think the the difficulty level is appropriate for what it's trying to do. Um, and uh, we haven't even played the hard missions yet. But, I mean, you, you've got oh, upgrades God. to assist you as you go through. So yeah, actually, that's a good question for you guys. What did you think of the um, the sort of upgrade system with uh, spending research points and and getting new gear and strategies? And I haven't thing? used it. I'm using the starter stuff still. Oh really? <laughs> I haven't figured that out yeah. yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think I've changed like one thing and we sort of had a quick look at it the first time Jam and I played, but we were just mucking about that first time. That's why I forgot most mm-hmm. of the controls when we played this time around. Well, you both yeah. unlocked really the um, flame turret, didn't you? Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I we just know. unlocked some sweet new capes. Um, yeah, the capes. Woo. Yeah, the mild desert cape. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. We'll try that out, see if that so twirls. It's pretty when we twirl, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> Jesus. We tend to need to dress up. Well, I was going to say, if, you, if, you, always do. You guys do. if you're interested yeah. in dress ups, Imogen, I, I know this game called Stardew Valley where there's 111 different shirts to choose from, but anyway. Oh, yep. oh I had so much difficulty choosing. All right, all right moving on, moving on. Um, That's another story. 
so the, the upgrades, uh, you know, work on a research points kind of system by the look of it, and you will get those points from leveling up, um, which is an experience-based thing that happens sort of gradually. Um, it looks like you don't receive any experience or benefit at all from killing of enemies. It's purely based on finishing missions and conquering planets, which is kind of cool. So and you, the amount of deaths you have. Uh, yeah, so if you have Total less deaths, deaths yeah, yeah you, you get more of a boost at the end of the mission, which is cool because that means that um, really there's no reason to not play it stealthy and try and avoid contact as much as possible. If you're destroying wave after wave after wave of dudes, it doesn't really get you anywhere apart from taking longer to do things. Um, which is interesting, but um, the and being re- cool. yeah, and being cool, that's right. There's also little uh, sort of research items you can pick up on the map. So if you um, you know, pick your landing zone, and you can pick your landing zone, you can pick anywhere on the map to come down, which is interesting too. So you can actually land right on the objective, or you can land further away. I was picking further away to land because that actually gave me a chance to sort of move across the map and find stuff on the way. So if there's any of these little research um, chunks that I could pick up and. Uh, and collect as I went, then that gave me more of a chance to do that. And I think you need uh, 10 little research pickups to um, unlock your next research point and put that towards other upgrades. Um, so th- yeah. there's the huge you, numbers of upgrades. Yeah. Yeah, the closer you drop to the objectives, the the high like the higher the likelihood of the higher the number of enemies you're going to encounter. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you drop right into them if you're quite unlucky, um, or lucky if you crush them in the process, which is kind of cool too. So I think that just ups the difficulty just a little bit in terms of the spawning and alarm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a good balancing said. mechanic. Hmm. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I agree. Um, You've right, got so to make that choice as a team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, so um, final thoughts. Um, did we uh, really enjoy it? Will, will we play again? Would you recommend to others? What, what are your will, thoughts? So let's. Imagine I will you play again for sure. I will play again for sure. I'll try it with control. It's a fun little game to have. It's maybe a bit expensive, I guess, but that's just I think my sort of thoughts about how much we're going to play it. But since all of us have it, it'll be a fun little game that we can kind of crank out and add to the roster of multiplayer games. I will definitely play it again. I've had fun every single time I played it. So sweet. Two thumbs up, Ollie. I really liked it. So I, got, I played the game with randoms on the internet, and we got old-school formations going. We were doing back-to-back squares and firing lines. It was amazing, unlike the clusterfuck that you guys sound like you had. <laughs> um, we needed you, Ollie. <laughs> yeah, no, like I said, I would have gotten very angry. I had a feeling. <laughs> Why is it bad? Uh, no, I really liked the game. I really liked the game. I like it semi Warhammer 40,000 slash Starship, Starship Trooper aesthetic. I'm a big fan of that, which is why I like both of those things. And I really like the frantic get the button combinations in the middle of combat while there's 50 bugs charging at me. Oh, shit. Like, I really like that. It's a very nice balancing mechanic. Hmm. And I really like the fact that everything kills you. It's like, oh, I caught an ammo dump on my head. I'm dead. Yeah. Oh, there's the extraction ship. It squashed me. I'm dead. Oh, my mate turned around too fast. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> like, I really like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will play it in future. Maybe with you guys. We'll see. <laughs> Sorry, Jam. <laughs> I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I also forgot to add, it was funny when Luke walked off the edge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just and ran straight into lava. Good job. <laughs> yeah. So, so the map it's is completely great. interactive as well. Yeah. Yeah, I will be playing it again. It's, it's, it's a great little party play. Pick up and have a laugh and shoot something. Sweet. Yep, I'm a huge fan. Um, pretty much everything that Ollie said, same reasons. Um, the general theme and aesthetic, I'm a, a huge, uh, you know, proponent of. And the multiplayer was sweet. That was the thing I really, really was keen on. And um, thankfully, it did exactly what it said on the tin and went really, really smoothly. Um, and multiplayer is a hell of a lot more fun when you can accidentally kill each other because, my God, it makes for some hilarious stories. So. Uh, yeah that was hilarious and we've had a bunch of our friends asking about it tonight as well as and what we thought so hopefully we can uh, get a few more people to chuck it in their steam li- libraries and um and have a bit of a a pool of uh people who are willing to play it going um and that'll be cool so yeah would play again a plus plus several good thumbs recommendation, up Luke. sorry good recommendation yeah good thanks. recommendation Cool. Well, you know, I had it recommended to me, so I can't take all the credit. So anyway, <laughs> so speaking of recommendations, we need to make a a random determination of next month's game. So 
Um, now, the way this works is we ask all of our listeners to suggest games um, to put into the mix. We randomly determine one um, basically when we do our review episode every month, and then we play that one the following month. So the general guidelines are is that we want to pick games that are reasonably short in length, so we don't want anything that's going to take us more than 10 hours to sort of get a good feel of. Um, we want to pick games that are not um, sort of platform exclusives on a particular console. Um, if it's only available on PC, that's okay because we can generally all play that. But if it's something that only exists on PlayStation or on Xbox, then we've got a bit of a problem because we don't all own those consoles. So something that's available on all of them would be great. Um, digital download only because we don't want to be going in shops and hunting for discs. Um, and generally speaking, we want something that is $30 or under. Um, and if you've got an idea of something that fits into to that category, which there is a million of things you could possibly suggest, then let us know uh, via our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com backslash party loaded um, on Twitter at party loaded show, or just send us the suggestion directly via our email, which is mail at party um, So we've got a, uh, a list of games, which we are now going to randomly determine our next one of. So Ollie, do you have the randomly determining game device? Otherwise known as a dice. I have a random number generator, <laughs> also known as a dice. Cool. All right. <laughs> Give that bad boy a roll. Because we and... constantly said that Luke's was rigged, so I'm doing it this week <laughs> to prove the lack of rigging. Go for it. All right, I'll see if I can roll this close to my mic. Did you hear that? Good job. Kind of. Yeah. Good yeah. effects, yep. All right. So that is a four, which I actually have to open the tab <gasps> up. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> re-roll, re-roll. <laughs> Mulligans. Mulligans. Oh, shit. Uh-oh, oh, dear. No. I cannot wait to play uh, this Imogen, game. Oh, Imogen, shit. what will we be playing I'm next sorry. month? What? We will be playing Hatterful Boyfriend, which is a <laughs> dating simulator featuring mainly birds and pigeons. So... My dog's horror. This sounds like oh, a man. fucking abomination. <laughs> I the best love. thing about it is it's got multiple endings. You can choose your own path. So the important thing is I want to know at the end of the month who you ended up with and why. <laughs> it is, I like it. I'm it gonna is one of these a happy ending? Oh, they have to be. They yeah. have to be. I'm going I'm to gonna anticipate that one of us will be left without a bird boyfriend. God. <laughs> I reckon it's Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, for the next month we will be dating birds. All right. Yay! <laughs> I'm sorry. Good, good dice rolling, Ollie. Curse you, dice. You're fired. Curse you. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So oh, it is currently nine dollars ninety nine USD on Steam. Okay. Thanks, is... Jim. Purchasing now. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a, it's quite a, an old game. So there is like a lot of stuff out on the internet around it. Um, I heard about it from The Patch, which is Rooster Teeth's gaming um, podcast, Mm -hmm. and their review of it was hilarious, and they made Ryan Haywood play it. So if Ryan Haywood can play it, you guys can play it. Right. I'm just most concerned about this actually existing in my Steam library and somebody who I actually respect (laughs) at some point seeing that and just looking at it and going, what the shit? You mean like our Steam community? (laughs) (laughs) Could be worse, Luke. Could be worse. Could be Honey Pop. Yeah, that's oh, true. Oh, no, no, that game never goes in this list. <laughs> I should put it in there. I should do nope. that. Oh, God, no. I refuse. No. That means I also get to choose a new game to put in the list. I'm excited. Oh. What's going to be next? Oh. RGB Chameleon. <laughs> so, so, slow down. Let's get through this shit show first, and then we'll work out what's going on next month. <laughs> then we'll decide I'm if everybody going... gets to make any choices anymore. <laughs> Ever I'm again. I'm laugh if Luke is just like, game of the year. <laughs> right? I know. He's just the best. He's like, this I had so much trouble. I had so much I'm trouble three, choosing. I, I couldn't. <laughs> I'm 50 hours in, guys. I'm committed. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm 50 hours I in, I, can... I should be committed. Oh, God. Yeah, I wonder what platforms it's on. I wonder if I can play it on, like, an iPad or something. That'd be neat. Mm. I would be shocked if it was just on PC. Mm. Yeah, me too. Okay. Well, anyway, that'll be a super yay! fun one. Time to start the download. <laughs> Mine is downloading yay, Japanese as soon as we yet. finish this. <laughs> oh God, I'm uh, I'm going to get to this Thanks, at some point. Japan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, that is our uh, party game review of the month. So uh, thanks, team, for for giving Helldivers a good shake, and uh, we'll be getting on to Hatter for Boyfriend shortly. Um, I- <laughs> 
<laughs> so, uh, in the meantime... My life we'll... is complete right now. I'm so... <laughs> You're welcome. I'm making Ollie and Luke play How to Foot Boyfriend. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I have less issue than, than Luke does. Uh, that's probably so. true. Your love of Japan will we'll get you through, Ollie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway... <laughs> In the meantime, uh, we can be found at all the usual places, so check out our Steam group. Uh, have, have a look at us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash partyloaded. On Twitter, at partyloadedshow. Me, email us, mail at partyloaded.com. And, uh, yeah, send us your feedback for the episodes. Uh, let us know if you've played Hatterful Boyfriend and tell us what we, <laughs> what on earth we're in for. <laughs> Um, and suggest a, another party game for uh, Party Game of the Month next month so that we don't have to play anything suggested by Imogen ever again. <laughs> <That'd be great. laughs> uh, oh, come on. Crit to the Necro Dancer was great. No, actually, that's it true. I'll, I'll give you that. That was a solid game. I'm still playing that game, so it's got some legs. Cool, cool. All right, well, anyway, we'll wrap things up there. What are you guys planning to do for the next week between now and our next episode? Anything interesting? Hopefully not by Stardew Valley. Time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably play out of a boyfriend to be honest. Yeah. It'll be something that I can put pick up and put down. It'll be really easy for me to play while you guys are playing Stardew Valley. Okay. Okay. Mm. Well Jamie, I'll expect to see you in the valley pretty much straight after this indeed yep. and Minecraft and had a full boyfriend and all of the things. And Ollie, what sort of suge- uh, you know, sensible <laughs> slightly more masculine gaming are you going to be doing? <laughs> Had a wow. boyfriend. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually going to start playing it probably the week this weekend. Okay. Yeah. Just so it's done, and I, if Just I like it, over it's done. done with. Yeah. I'm, it's like tearing a bandaid off. I'm gonna yeah. Do it quick. Oh. I bet he replays it. I'm calling it now. I bet Ollie plays it and then goes. Oh, I want to get all the endings. Get, different- <laughs> get all the endings. Ollie's going to replay it for sure. Uh, oh, this is fantastic. T- tune in next month to see how that one <laughs> resolves itself. Cool. Mm. Anyway, from me and from everybody else, until next week, that's the show. Bye. Bye. Ta-ra. The Party Loaded Podcast is a Channel Endgame production. For this and more great gaming content, bookmark channelendgame.com.